Five minutes after I purchased Lost in Vivo, I made the horrible mistake of asking my friend, Hey man, what are you playing there? He then bought me Muse Dash because it's roughly the price of three gumballs when it's on sale. When I booted it up, I was told to wear headphones, which I didn't do because no one tells me what to do. An anime girl essentially grunted into my ear, and I was met with the most horrifying main menu screen I've ever seen. What in the fuck? I realized right then and there he was doing me a favor because I bought the wrong horror game. Muse Dash is honestly exactly what you think it would be. A horny on main anime vomit 2 button J-pop rhythm game. And honestly, as the Guinness World Record holder for the most closeted weeb of all time. I can't help but love it. Par for course for rhythm games, you listen to the dulcet tones of high-pitched anime girls and time your button presses to the right moment to get the highest amount of points you can before the song ends. The game begins with easy songs you get accustomed to the flow of pressing F and J over and over again, and steadily ramps up the difficulty into harder and slightly more anime-er songs as you progress. The beautiful yet simple art direction of poppy colorful characters getting their heads smashed in by scantily clawed chibi anime girls is very mesmerizing. As you progress into harder and harder songs, you'll find the vivid pastel colors start to bleed and cut into your eyes, and you'll have a hard time focusing on what's happening on screen. There's even a loading screen toad tip which tells you to take a break and rest your eyes. I always knew toad was a weeb. Fucking weeb! Ugh. Zoning out while staring dead center in the middle of your screen in anticipation for the next thing to pop up on the screen is a key part of how Lost and Vivo established its atmosphere. While you're walking your good boy, good boy one night, he gets wind wakered into a storm drain and you must go down into the mazy surrealist world of the sewers. Inspired greatly by Silent Hill, Vivo is about exploring and soaking in the claustrophobic atmosphere of the sewers. Long, increasingly narrow hallways, deeper and deeper pits, illusions that play tricks on your eyes. All these elements take part in changing the environment subtly to unnerve the player. And despite the core idea of the game being just taking a Sunday stroll down a linear corridor, it pulls some surprising twists that alter this idea and spin it on its head. Going down these tunnels often transitions you into large, more open gameplay areas where you explore, use hammer, hammer. diplomacy to fix some problems, and solve puzzles. Puzzles tend to incorporate all the aspects of the gameplay loop, which includes picking up and reading notes off the ground, fighting off enemies, and using the items you find and pick up. All these elements combine to create puzzles that really hit that sweet spot in difficulty between square peg and square hole, duh. And square peg doesn't fit any of these holes, what, what do I- what do I do, what? When you boot up Vivo, you're told to wear headphones, which I didn't do because I'm an asshole and I don't listen to anybody. There's a nice PS1 era jingle as opposed to an anime girl mating call. <laughs> Then a simple retro feeling menu. The music and the sounds of the UI foreshadow the absolute masterwork that is the sound design of the game. All the music of the game places a sense of pure dread within you. The noises of the monsters are unreal and they unhinge you as you play. The small little touches such as the wind blowing through tunnels and the wobble effects some monsters do when you look at them is just... It's just good stuff, man. It's good stuff. The impeccable sound design and attention to detail in it alone elevates this game into something truly special. Just the sheer fact that when you select a new character, they have their own unique song that plays within the character select and the main menu. That speaks volumes to the game's commitment to attention to detail regarding audio. Ugh. And since the only thing you can do in the game is, well, play the game and look at the cute pictures, every additional feature is in support of that. Each character variant has unique and absolutely gorgeous animation that changes the way you play the game just slightly. You can unlock both new loading screens and title screens. They they really know their audience, don't they? You can unlock little animal dudes that offer buffs. Each song has unique challenges. There's overall challenges for lifetime plays. And that is really it as far as I can tell. The blessing and curse of Muse Dash is within its simplicity. There is only one game mode that can be altered with slight variance and that's, that's it. No extra modes, no optional content to look through, just character variants and art. Even the menu itself is so bare bones, I initially thought I was missing something. But the lack of extra features comes with everything being extremely polished with a colorful and fun to look at presentation. Simple but charming menus that easily allow you to pick and listen to whichever song you're looking for, because I really can't remember any of these song names to save my life. A great UI is something that's often overlooked. 
but the ability to easily flip to the item you're looking for, read its description, and look at it in the 3D model viewer, it's, it's just straight up fun and charming. And within the menu next to your health, you can see the real life time when you're playing the game. And this is symbolic to the fact that no matter what time you're playing the game, you're trapped in this maze hell and there's no escape until you find your dog. And that right there, that's the good stuff, baby. That's game design. But despite the unique horror ideas it brings to the table, if you take a step back and look at Lost and Vivo's overall structure, you begin to see a little bit of pacing issues. The overall game is very formulaic, and it falls into the here is big tunnel transition area, then here is big explore area, then here is big transition area, then here is big explore area, and then here is... You, you, you get the point. And now, this may be due to my own personal bias, but when I play a horror game, I have something I call the caveman test. About halfway through the game, I realized that I have a sledgehammer. So I stopped playing like a bitch and I started fucking sprinting to anything and everything and beating the ever living shit out of it. Most horror games fumble and break to the elusive caveman test, and Vivo was no exception. Combat is overall somewhat clunky, and the enemies and horror scares really don't, uh... They don't really work if you're sprinting towards them with a fucking hammer or axe or shotgun, really. But there were a couple of unique tricks the game pulled on me or that limited my sprint and it forced me to play like a regular ass human being and I had to deal with the spooks head on rather than dealing with them as a Neanderthal jacked up on chocolate milk and granola bars. Vivo is also on the shorter side and is the price of about 13 and a half on sale muse dashes. And yeah, I had to play them the same amount of time. It's only fair to do it like that, duh. Uh. Lost in Vivo has hauntingly beautiful sound design that's coupled with a holistic approach to horror gameplay and storytelling. It presents unique situations and constantly soaks the player in an overall sense of dread and anxiety. But I really don't understand how I'm supposed to find the rhythm here and play along to the beat. What kind of rhythm game doesn't have notes? I mean, what? Th th come on, that's like standard here. And while Muse Dash tantalizes the player, get it, with near perfect rhythm gameplay and extremely charming visual aesthetics, I just can't help but find it to be a lackluster horror game. Past the initial jump scare, there really isn't much going on for it in the spooks department. However, it did pass the caveman test with flying colors, so it does get points for that. 